Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is LaTanya. I teach eighth grade social studies, history, and language arts in Southern California. Normally on this channel, I just share the different aspects of my life as a teacher, sometimes through sit down videos such as this one, and most of the time through vlog format. So today's video is obviously going to be one of those sit down videos, and this is actually a collaboration with Lego Education. Lego Education has started this really wonderful campaign called Rebuild the World and in this campaign what they would like to promote amongst children but adults could benefit from this as well it's just the idea of being resilient just the idea of knowing that failure is a part of life but in failure there's a lot of opportunity for growth and to learn and to just make it okay for students when they fail or when they mess up so they asked me if i would like to be a part of this campaign and once i knew what it was all about i said absolutely positively yes so as i mentioned i'm an eighth grade teacher in southern california um, i've been teaching this school year we're about 10 weeks in i believe and i am currently teaching 100 percent virtually i am physically teaching from my classroom but my students are at home so i'm teaching to them through the computer um, and as confident as I have been in the past few years of my teaching this year was different everything that I knew how to do now needed to be completely revamped um, all the things that I was comfortable with I was not necessarily able to use them and then things I had never used before now became critical pieces of my you know day-to-day -day teaching life so with that being said the very beginning of the school year there were some failures there were some mistakes Mistakes. There were some moments where I was like, what in the world is happening to my teaching life right now? And in the moment, it is extremely stressful, very upsetting, enough to put a grown woman to tears. Um, but weeks later, and in retrospect, those failures that I experienced in the very beginning of the school year have only helped me to be a stronger teacher, virtually, obviously, but also in general. Now, when we do go back to in-person teaching, there's going to be some resources and tools that I have access to that I wouldn't have had before had I not been put in the situation and had I not fumbled through it in the very beginning. So I totally resonated with the premise behind this campaign of just building and maintaining that sense of resiliency because we need it in life, whether we're adjusting because of a pandemic or because you know we're just experiencing failure as a part of our day-to-day -day life in whatever situation that may be. So I said yes. So once I said yes, they sent me the materials that I was going to need. And what they sent me is a Lego Education Spike Prime unit. So this unit is very focused on STEAM, um, so science, technology, engineering. Uh, and as soon as I saw what it was and what all was involved with the kit, I knew that I wanted to include my cousin Tony and his son Sean. Hello everybody, I'm at home. No, I'm not at home. <laughs> I'm at my cousin Tony's house. This is my cousin Hi. Tony. Yes. This is his son, Sean. Um, we are gonna spend a little bit of time together playing with the Lego Education Spike Prime Unit. So we just got it started. Um, they've organized their materials. They have the app set up and ready to go. So Sean is a seventh grader. Yes. Um, Sean, as a seventh grader, what is your favorite subject in school? History and math. History and math. Let's talk about math. Okay. Um, when you are solving a math problem and you realize you don't know the answer or you don't know what you're doing, what, what's your game plan? What do you do? Do you just give up? Do you ask for the answer from someone else? Um, I get frustrated, but I don't give up. Why don't you give up? Because it's not good to give up. Yeah, it's not good to get up, give up. And I know that your dad, Tony, is not an advocate of giving up. No, no, not too much. <laughs> we gotta find a way. So. so we're gonna spend some time together. Tony has a science and engineering background, so he's gonna kind of support Sean throughout the process, but we're really just gonna let Sean have some fun with this kit and continue to teach himself that it's okay to mess up, right, Sean? Yes. All right. So, so I headed down to their house this morning. Um, Tony does have a science and engineering background. I don't remember if he mentioned that at all. And Sean is a seventh grader who loves history and math as his favorite subjects. So, um, Tony is very much the type of father that teaches Sean that, you know, we can't give up. 
if you have difficulty, you gotta press through. So I knew that he would be all about this campaign. And Sean has a pretty good attitude towards, you know, messing up and failure. So we were talking about, you know, math with that being his favorite, favorite subject. And I know when I was taking math, if I got the answer wrong, like my whole world came to an end and I just got stuck frozen in the idea that my answer was wrong. But for him, he said, yes, sometimes it's frustrating when that happens, but he's, he is willing to keep trying and that's what he typically does. So I was like, you are perfect for this little activity that we're gonna do. So we opened up the kid and I probably spent a couple hours at their house. We built a total of two things. Uh, the first thing that we built was a robot arm that was able to pick up things and put things down. Um, and so the lesson itself approximated that it would take a student about 45 minutes. I think it took Sean somewhere closer to 30 minutes. Um, were there some missteps along the way? Yes. And when that happened, I made sure to remind Sean, like, that's okay. That's almost the point of this. Like, we don't expect you to just put this together perfectly um, in one quick and easy series of steps. So the mess up is a part of the process. And in the mess up, we'll learn um, some of the mistakes that we can avoid the next time we decide to build this particular item or the next time we build something else. So there was actually one time where he thought he messed up, called his dad to come in for the rescue, but he actually had it. And so like he did have a couple of areas where there were some mistakes, some parts were in the wrong place or maybe he had the wrong piece in his hand, but it all worked out in the end. Dad to the rescue. <laughs> what happened? You, did you shove it down there? Yeah. I was supposed to put this one in, I think. Okay. So we, we have mistake number one. Sean yes. thinks he put a part in a place it had no business being. So Dad is now going to fix that. <laughs> Baby. Sounds like something. <laughs> it's... And it turns out he did make a mistake. It is the same size, which is what his dad was telling him. Well, you gotta learn these mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> and he got that robot arm built, and then we moved on to the coding part where we were able to learn how to make the robot arm do what we wanted it to do. Make it open, make it close, make it open for X number of seconds, close for X number of seconds. Sean has built his motorized arm. He's looking for something to pick up now that he's got it all coded and ready to go. <laughs> so that was really cool um it was good to see and just watching sean and his dad together um just having fun on a saturday morning playing with uh lego bricks was a great great thing to witness so once he finished that and he was kind of excited to keep going i asked him if he would be willing to build something that i saw that i was really intrigued by which was this break dancer he said yes, so he started the process of unbuilding his robot arm and then went into building the brake So Sean just finished building the arm. How was the putting together process for you? How'd you feel? Putting together was pretty easy. Yeah, did you make some mistakes by any yes, chance? I yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but did everything work out in the end? Yes. Yeah. And then probably the hardest part was just us figuring out how to code it. But once we kind of thought that through, we got that to work. So he yeah. successfully has opened and closed. You want to show him? See? Wow. He's got that done. Everything that worked. Yep. So now he's going to unbuild this one, and we are going to try to build the break dancer because I just begged him to do that. <laughs> so. Now, this one, this particular item was a little bit more involved in terms of the number of pieces required and the configuration of things than the robot arm. And I could definitely see with this one that there were more moments where Sean was a little unsure of himself, where he was kind of messing up with putting places in, or putting pieces in certain places but what's funny or what's interesting about that is i think his mess ups were just because he was rushing because he was so excited to see the finished product but despite whatever the cause of the mess ups were he kept going he tried again and obviously eventually he got everything figured out and we got our little break dancer put together and had him do a couple moves for us we switched the music up um it was really fun that's probably my favorite thing that i've seen so far so all in all we had a great time we spent a couple of hours it was very like mellow low key even though we were messing up no one was really stressing because i had started the process with them saying like hey if we mess up that is totally fine. That's a part of the process. So none of us really got freaked out when that happened, even though I may have freaked out a little bit on the inside, but you know, I held it together. So he finished and then I packed everything up 
because he had such a good time with it, I let him know that I was going to let him keep the kit, but that I was gonna take it home with me because I wanted to put myself to the test. So while Sean and Tony were building, I was just kind of watching the process and talking along the way. Um, and I felt bad because I was like, you should probably be participating. Like you should get in there and kind of help out and see if you can do this. Um, especially because for me, anything that has something to do with math, science, sometimes technology, but definitely putting something together just causes me the most anxiety. I've always been that way. I've been very self-conscious, very insecure in that realm of learning. So science, math, engineering, anything like that, I just, I just am not very confident in myself. If you ask me to read a book, write a paper, talk about a book, communicate, I feel pretty confident in my ability to do that and there's not a whole lot of anxiety that comes with that. But if you tell me to solve a math problem, put something together, I go into that just anxious. I go into that assuming that I'm gonna mess up, that if anything messes up, it's gonna be my fault. And then if it gets messed up, it's not gonna be able to be fixed and everything is going to be over. So knowing that that is how I approach those things um, on a pretty regular basis, and coupling that with what this campaign is all about and that I'm participating and supporting the efforts, I knew that I had to go home, try and build something all by myself and just force myself to push through any difficulty that I have. Because at the end of the day, how am I as a teacher gonna go into my classroom and promote the idea of you know, pushing forward, being resilient, not giving up, keep trying if I'm not willing to do that in situations that I know are generally challenging for me. So I sat down at my dining room table. I put, uh, I selected what to put together first. I chose to put together something called the rain or shine. Um, little guy, he's a, like a weather forecaster. It seemed to be relatively straightforward. Um, so I put that together and was it an easy smooth process for me? No, it wasn't. Were there moments where I was very unsure of what I was doing? Yes, there was. And was and were there moments where I messed up? Of course there were, because I always mess up when it comes to that. But in those moments of panic, I had to just ask myself, Latanya, what would you tell your student to do if they were in this moment? Would you say, well, you've messed up, so give up, don't try anymore? Obviously not. I would never, I would never say that in the classroom. I would never allow that to even be uttered in my classroom. So I knew I had to just kind of apply what I would tell my students to myself. Take a deep breath, focus, reread, skip a step if you need to. Um, just don't panic and just remind yourself that it's going to be okay. Like you'll probably figure it out and it's going to be okay. And you'll be able to look back at this moment and be like, wow, I was so stressed, but look at me now. So that's what I did. And, I, and because of that, I successfully finished building the uh, little weather or the meteorologist, I'll call him. Um, and I felt really pr proud of myself. I was proud of myself mostly because I didn't give up despite the fact that I really wanted to, because the truth is if I had given up, nobody would have known. I just wouldn't have included that in this video. Nobody would have known that I started, I tried and I gave up. So I was really proud of myself for not giving up when I very easily could have. And I have to admit that at the end of it, when everything was put together and I knew I had done everything correctly, there was a huge sense of satisfaction that I felt in just being finished and having accomplished that. And then just the confidence of reminding myself that you are smart enough to do this, that you can do this, that failing doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Failing just means that you need to try again. Um, and so that felt really good and I'm really glad that I did it because I wouldn't have had that feeling had I just given up. So um, that is my experience with the Spike Prime Kit. Now if you are an elementary school teacher and you would like something along these lines, Lego Education does have another kit that is geared towards younger students that is called the We Do Kit. Um, if you have questions about that, you can leave comments in the comment section or you can leave the question I should say in the comment section below and I will try and get that information over to you. But all in all, more than anything, what I really appreciate is the messaging behind this Rebuild the World campaign. I think in these very trying times, it is very important to remind students and adults that failure, quite honestly, is a part of life. We're all gonna fail at some point. We're all gonna mess up on something along the way. And it's not the failure or the mess up that defines us. It's just how we handle it and how we come out on the other side of it. And I 
once again prove that to myself with this experience. So if you're a classroom teacher and you're either looking for some hands-on learning, collaborative opportunities, or you really do want to promote that kind of resiliency in your students, this is a great option. If you're a parent, you can also use this with your child as well. You don't need to be a classroom teacher to use this. Uh, the directions were very straightforward. Everything was very easy to follow. And if you have a child that has expressed some kind of interest in um, anything related to STEAM or building, this is a great option. Or if you just want to promote that mindset of resiliency through play, this is obviously a great option for you to choose in order to accomplish that goal. So that is all that I have to say in this particular video. This video is a little bit short and sweet, but that's okay. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned here, that I've said here, or about the product, please leave those questions in the comment section and I will answer them to the best of my ability or I will find the answer for you. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please make sure that you do that. I would love to have you here. And if you are not following me on Instagram, you can find me there under the same name smarty style other than that i hope you guys are having a great day whatever you are doing that you are staying positive and that you are finding joy and peace and love in this very challenging time that we are all facing so until next time i hope you all stay well and i will talk to you soon bye everybody